In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Well, so today, uh, July 21st, we have the Feast of St. Lawrence of Brindisi. He was a Capuchin friar, a linguist, a great preacher, and a military general. Not all combinations you would think that would go together. But he was born, actually, uh, tomorrow on July 22nd in the year 1559 in Italy to wealthy parents. He was a child phenom, I think is what they call it. He was absolutely brilliant and a very, had a very great sanctity as well. He combined the best qualities of both nature and grace. Uh, he preached his first sermon when he was six years old. Uh, he actually went to the cathedral, his hometown cathedral, and preached from the pulpit and converted people. So it was just a prodigy of God from the very beginning. Uh, how many six-year-olds out there are ready to preach, trade places? Uh, well, he entered the Franciscans at age 16, and in addition to being a model friar, he was a brilliant student. So um, in addition to his native Italian, he learned Hebrew, Greek, and Latin, and can speak them fluently. He also could speak German and Spanish. He also was fluent in French and Bohemian. So he, he knew like six or seven different languages than his, his native tongue. Absolutely phenomenal. So he uh, quickly gained notice because of his abilities and he was appointed by the Pope to evangelize the Jews who were in Rome. His Hebrew was so good that the Jews thought he was a converted rabbi. Uh, he was well, very well suited for the task of converting the Jews because his knowledge of Latin, Hebrew, and Greek uh, enabled him to read the Bible in the original languages it was written in. Uh, note there, we don't actually, even at that time, uh, there were no original manuscripts still existing uh, of the Bible. Nobody has the original manuscript of the Bible, uh, but we have uh, very early copies of the Bible, and it was these he was able to read, Those are the earliest of copies. So he went out through all through Italy, founding monasteries, exhorting sinners to repent, converting Jews, converting Protestants, and was so successful that he was sent uh, by his order into all of Europe as well. And again, he continued to found monasteries and to preach and convert sinners. And this is very important as the uh, Protestant heresy was growing stronger and stronger. In fact, by the time of his death in 1619, uh, that was one year after the start of the Thirty Years' War, which was devastating to Europe. So this, this right here, St. Lawrence of Brindisi, is preaching at the time when Catholic Europe was beginning to collapse. Uh, that that um, uh, era inaugurated by Constantine over a thousand years before uh, was coming to a close. Uh, so St. Lawrence of Brindisi was, was definitely fighting um, uh, for the faith in that time. And so his, his work was, was tremendously important. If he hadn't worked, who knows how many additional whole countries and regions would have been lost to those Protestant uh, heresies. <clears throat> uh, so he continued um, uh, preaching and uh, converting sinners, uh, converting Protestants. And uh, the reason he was successful, he was very successful, because he maintained his discipline in daily prayer every day, uh, doing his meditation, doing his uh, whatever the, um, the office, the obligations of a, of a Franciscan. Uh, so despite, despite all that exterior work, traveling, preaching, uh, he was still maintaining interior prayer. That's why he was successful. A very, um, a very good book written, written on that precis precisely that point is called uh, The Soul of the Apostolate. That was written by Dom Chatard. And it's a book describing about how you can have the most um, prodigious external activity if it's not inspired by internal prayer, it's not going to be effective. Uh, so anytime, anytime we're hearing about these saints and they did these wonderful, great works for God, it's because they built on the interior life of prayer. That's how it happened. Uh, so he continues uh, his work, his prayer, first of all, but then his work. And in the year 1601, he would have been how old, uh, 42 years old. 1601, he was appointed by the Holy Roman Emperor to be chaplain of the Imperial Army. And this sounds quite impressive, but there was one problem. The army didn't exist yet. He had to raise it. And so he was appointed chaplain of this army, and he went around preaching to, uh, again, all the German princes especially, uh, and he was able to raise a force of 18,000 uh, uh, Catholics. And this was impressive, 
uh, and it was needed to defend Europe against invasion by the Muslim Turks. Uh, the Muslims had caused, they had besieged Constantinople in the year 1453, and that was the fall of the, the Byzantine Empire, uh, that, that part of the Holy Roman Empire uh, that had maintained um, a continuity, again, ever since Constantine. Constantine moved the capital from Rome to Constantinople in uh, mid-300s, and the Holy Roman Emperor had continued from Constantinople since the 300s. And then uh, 1,100 years later, that's finally when the Roman Empire fell, the Catholic Roman Empire, and it's because of these Turks. So now 150-some mm, years later, they were moving further into Europe, and so uh, St. Lawrence of Brindisi had to raise that army to defend against them. So he raised 18,000 Catholic troops, and this was to go up against 80,000 Turks, over four to one. And there was one major battle in Hungary where the Catholic forces uh, arrived on the battlefield and they saw the Turks spread out and they all despaired. They thought, it, it, we're, we're all going to die, this is gonna be a massacre. Uh, St. Lawrence uh, roused them to uh, courage. He preached uh, um, uh, uh, a stirring sermon and to give them courage, he himself rode out at the front of the battle uh, on a horse carrying only a crucifix. Rode into battle, leading these 18,000 against 80,000, and it was a complete rout. The enemy was routed. Uh, the Catholic forces were entirely successful. Uh, the generals, after that, um, they all said they ascribed the victory uh, solely to St. Lawrence of Brindisi. If it hadn't been for him, we would not have uh, been successful. <clears throat> So after this, after he had been uh, preaching this army, raising this army, founding monasteries, converting uh, uh, souls, he just wanted to retire to Italy and return to his life of prayer and penance. Uh, instead, however, the Capuchins elected him superior general. And so he continued engaging in diplomatic missions, um, especially in, in not only raising armies against the invading Turks, but also against the Protestant leagues that were forming all over Europe. Uh, they were, the Protestants were now, it was not only a religious movement, but now actually really the, the masks was coming off, it was a political movement. And so you had these, these Protestant um, armies rising up, rebelling against uh, the, the Catholic rule. And so they were forming a lot of leagues, and so uh, St. Lawrence of Brindisi was trying to gain uh, Catholics to work together to fight against them. Uh, something sounds similar to our uh, circumstances today. Uh, so a great deal of success uh, to St. Lawrence came from his sermons, of which we have 800. 800 of St. Lawrence of Brindisi's sermons are still available. They're filled with quotes from Holy Scripture, which shows his extensive knowledge of the Bible. And uh, despite um, all this intense activity, his di diplomacy, his preaching, his uh, uh, you know working with, with raising up a military, uh, he also wrote treatises on philosophy, theology, apologetics, Mariology, and so on, uh, to the extent he was declared a doctor of the church for his theological teaching. And again, all the while, he never left off his life of prayer. Um, he was um, renowned for eminent sanctity, and it was said that he had the gift of tears. Uh, he would weep copiously at mass, and uh, sometimes after mass, the altar cloth would be, would be soaked from his tears uh, during Mass. At one, one point, uh, people reported seeing, uh, when he was doing the elevation of the host, uh, people reported seeing a vision of the Christ child uh, while he was there celebrating Mass. When the child came down and actually embraced uh, St. Lawrence. Again, that, that was his true, the true secret of success was his interior life of prayer first. So after many years of service as superior general, as a diplomat, as a, a preacher, as, as convert, kind of converting souls, uh, he returned to Italy, but almost immediately was sent back out by the Pope on a diplomatic mission to the, uh, one of the Dukes of Germany. Uh, he was successful and he returned to Italy again, finally. Uh, this time he was called out by the emperor to go on another diplomatic mission to Spain. Uh, so he goes again, he is successful once again in, his, in this mission, uh, but this was the last. He fell sick while he was in Spain, uh, from which he never recovered. And in the year 1619, when he was exactly 60 years old, he died on the day of his birth, July 22nd. 
Uh, so what a life of St. Lawrence of Brindisi. 60 years uh, from the time he was six years old, uh, converting souls, preaching uh, the truths of God. And that just shows that, you know, we, we never know what God will call us to do. I mean, who imagines uh, when you join the Franciscans that you're actually going to end up leading an army? Nobody expects that. Right? Nobody does not part of the Franciscan uh, charism, we could say, but God does unexpected things. We just never know uh, what he will call us to do. So we should do well to remember uh, that it is God who accomplishes all things. And as I mentioned, we are simply to respond. We are faithful in our daily prayer. We're faithful in going to bed, rising on time. Uh, uh, greeting God at the beginning of the day, at the end of the day, uh, recalling that it was God who's given us that time and that, that um, uh, this life we are to give for him. And if we do that, if we're mindful of God in those parts of the day, at the beginning, at the end, throughout, in the middle, we pray our rosary, uh, we, we do our spiritual reading, uh, we just don't know what God may accomplish in our lives. We have no idea what he's gonna bring for us. Uh, if he can turn a Franciscan monk into a military general, I mean, who knows what he could do with a married person, a consecrated single, a child, uh, a grown man, somebody whose career is over with. We just have no idea uh, to what God may call us, uh, but we'll never know if we're not faithful in our daily prayers. Uh, so that is what we should aspire to. I should aspire to be. What do you want to be in life? I want to be faithful in my daily prayers. After that, whatever God calls me to do, I will be ready to accept. Uh, so let's think about that and ask for the intercession of St. Lawrence and Brindisi uh, to be faithful in prayer. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.